Millions of animal and plant species of varying sizes and shapes inhabit the earth and they all have one thing in common. They are all made up of cells, the fundamental unit of life in living organisms. Scientists didn't know about the existence of cells until the invention of the microscope. Anton van Leeuwenhoek, an amateur Dutch scientist, is credited as the first person to see and describe living cells. Later, Robert Brown expanded on Leeuwenhoek's studies and pointed to the presence of a cell nucleus. In 1838, German botanist Matthias Schleiden examined numerous plant species and concluded that plants have different types of cells which form plant tissues. A year later, Theodore Schwann, a British zoologist, examined different animal cells and discovered that the cells have a thin outer layer, which we now know as the cell or plasma membrane. He also studied plant cells and concluded that in addition to a cell membrane, plant cells also have a cell wall, a characteristic unique to plants. Schleiden and Schwann together formulated the cell theory, which stated that both plants and animals are made up of cells and their products such as proteins and lipids. However, the cell theory did not explain the formation of new cells, which was clarified by Rudolf Virchow in 1855. He coined the Latin phrase, Omnis cellula e cellula, which meant that new cells arise from pre-existing cells, and accordingly modified the cell theory, which now states that all living organisms are composed of cells and products of cells, and these cells arise from pre-existing cells. Cell research received a further boost with the invention of the electron microscope as it enabled scientists to observe the structure of the cell. They observed that the structure of a cell varies in plants and animals. A plant cell, for instance, is surrounded by a distinct cell wall on the outside and a plasma membrane on the inside. Whereas an animal cell lacks a cell wall and has a plasma membrane instead that forms the outer cell boundary. Both animal and plant cells have a dense and spherical structure called the nucleus, which contains thread-like structures called chromosomes. Each chromosome is made of deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA which stores the genetic information of the organism. If the nucleus is membrane bound, then the cell is called an eukaryotic cell. They are found in members of kingdom protista, kingdom fungi, kingdom plantae, and kingdom animalia. On the other hand, cells without a membrane-bound nucleus are called prokaryotic cells, and members of Kingdom Monera possess such cells. Both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells are filled with cytoplasm, a semi-fluid matrix present inner to the cell membrane. However, in an eukaryotic cell, the cytoplasm does not include the nucleoplasm, the nucleus matrix filled with the contents of the nucleus. Cytoplasm is a hub of activities and chemical reactions, such as protein synthesis, that help the cell remain alive. Suspended inside the cytoplasm are distinct structures called organelles. In eukaryotic cells, 
we find membrane-bound organelles such as the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi complex, lysosomes, mitochondria, microbodies and vacuoles, as well as non-membrane-bound organelles such as ribosomes. Interestingly, ribosomes are also found in chloroplasts of plant cells as well as the mitochondria and rough endoplasmic reticulum of both plants and animals. Moreover, animal cells possess another non-membrane-bound organelle called the centriole, which aids in cell division. The cytoplasm of prokaryotic cells, on the other hand, lacks membrane-bound organelles but contains ribosomes and fragments of extra-chromosomal DNA called plasmids. Cells usually differ in size and shape. For instance, mycoplasma measure only 0.3 microns in length, whereas human red blood cells are about 7 microns in diameter and nerve cells measure around 4 to 100 microns. Amazingly, the ostrich egg is the largest isolated single cell and it measures 17 to 19 centimeters in length and 14 to 15 centimeters in width. Moreover, the shapes of cells range from disc-like to thread-like and from polygonal to columnar and cuboid. Today, Though we have gained a lot of information about cells, scientists are still engaged in unlocking the secrets of the cell and its organelles.